Hey there, it's Brie, and these are the books that I've reread the most. Before I really got involved in Goodreads and then eventually my blog and then eventually my YouTube channel, I used to reread books all the time, mostly because I didn't really have as many recommendations. The only way that I'd ever really find books was just by going to the bookstore and browsing. So if I found a book that I really liked, I would just end up rereading it over and over and over again. And honestly, I used to do that even when I started my blog and back when I first started my channel, like just a few years ago, I used to reread my favorite books a lot. And I do still reread books and I love of rereading books, but nowadays, now that I have so many recommendations, so many books on my TBR that I like absolutely want to read, it's a lot harder for me to justify rereading books. And in thinking about that, I decided that it would be fun to share some of the books that I reread over and over and over again. So a lot of these books are absolute comfort reads. Other books are just books that I was so obsessed with. I just wanted to feel the way I felt when I read it for the first time. And usually if I'm rereading a book, that's the main reason why. All of these books, a lot of them are oldies but goodies. Actually, all of them. Like, you're not gonna find any new releases here, obviously, because I've reread these the most. And the way I decided to narrow down this list, and it is a long list, I, I apologize in advance, but the way I decided to narrow down this list is by going for the ones that I've reread more than three times. Okay, so I feel like I have to reread the book that I reread at least once every couple of years, at least, if not once every year, at least ev once every couple of years. And my most recent reread of this one was actually, I think, gosh, was it? Yeah, it was like a couple of months ago because the new book came out. But it is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. If you're curious about this cover, this is the Illumicrate Special Edition cover, and it is stunning. But anyway, A Court of Mist and Fury is probably my all-time favorite book, my all-time favorite romance. I mean, it's a lot of people's favorites. This is part of the Akatar series. I'm sure you know what it's about. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But I have reread this book over and over and over again. And the number one reason why I reread it is because of how it made me feel. Unfortunately, I will never feel the way I felt when I first read this book but I can get pretty close if I wait a long enough time before reading it again. The most recent reason why I reread this book was mainly because the new book, A Court of Silver Flames, was coming out. And it was a great reread. And I ended up reading the entire Akatar series, so love this book. And like, honestly, I couldn't tell you how many times I reread that book. At least five, seven times I've read that book. And then another book that I reread over and over and over again is a book that I talk about all the time, and that is Archer's Voice. I have reread this book so many freaking times. This book is a small town grumpy sunshine romance. It's a loner hero. The hero is also mute. And oh my gosh, it is, I mean, it's probably, is it my favorite standalone contemporary romance? It might be. I reread this book so many times for the same reason why I reread A Court of Mist and Fury is just because of how it makes me feel. This is one of those books that when it comes up in conversation or if it comes up in a video, I will find myself wanting to reread it when I talk about it or like if I talk about it with a friend or something, I'm like, oh man, I need to reread that. Unlike A Court of Mist and Fury where I feel like I need to reread Akatar first, it's like a commitment to reread that one. And I also don't want to like read it too much because I'm afraid I'll ruin it. I don't feel that way with this one. Like this is a book that I feel like I can pick up whenever. And it's also a book that I turn to if I just need something to fall asleep to at night, like something like that where I don't necessarily have to finish it. It's definitely a comfort read for me. And then similar to that, I reread True North book number three by Serena Bowen over and over and over again. What is that book called? I never remember what it's actually called. Hold on. Okay, it's called Keepsake. So I reread this book over and over and over again. This is another one that has a virgin hero and he's not a loner hero. He is like the biggest cinnamon roll hero in the universe. If you haven't read this book before, I highly recommend reading the first and second book before reading this book because you will appreciate Zachariah, the hero in this a lot more because you see him in this book. But it's one of those situations where he is a very reverent hero, like he is obsessed with the heroine and he has loved her for a really long time from afar. He has like an innocence about him and a naivete about him. He was in a cult. He had escaped a cult and he has only been out of the cult for a couple of years. And when he was in the cult, he wasn't allowed to like watch movies or listen to music or anything like that. So he's discovering things for the first time. He was never allowed to be with a woman before either, which is why he's a virgin. And then the heroine is dealing with some stuff that has been going on. And this whole series revolves around this farm. Zachariah lives on the farm. It's so epic because when she finally starts to like come on to him or whatever, it's so sweet how he reacts to it because he's just kind of overwhelmed by it. 
oh, I just, I love this book so much. It, this is one of the books like Archer's Voice that when I talk about it and I recommend it, it makes me want to reread it. And now I want to reread it. <laughs> okay. And then a book that I reread a lot, like way back in the day, because it was one of those situations where I just didn't have a lot of books on my TBR. So this is a book that I read years and years and years ago. And I read the physical book of it and then I picked up the audiobook of it and then I started rereading it. So I reread the physical book a few times, but I picked up this book when probably about eight years ago because Rory was a baby when I first read it. And it's called Some Quiet Place by Kelsey Sutton. Kelsey Sutton is also known as KJ Sutton. She wrote Fortuna Sworn, but this is the first book I ever read by her. This is such a unique stunning book. It's beautifully written. It's short. It's a YA paranormal romance. It's about a girl who doesn't have emotions, but she sees emotions personified. So like fear is a person that she sees. Sadness is a person person that she sees. It's interesting because most of the mo emotions have given up on her. Like at first they really tried to get through to her and get her to feel something, but she just never would. The only one who hasn't given up on her is fear. This is probably the most unique love story I've ever read in my life. And it's so good. And there are a couple of parts in it that actually kind of freaked me out, like scared me a little bit. And I remember the first time I read this, Rory was a baby and it was like the middle of the night. She, she was up and I was feeding her and I was like reading this book in the middle of the night. And I remember being a little bit freaked out. Like, look at that cover. Reread this book so much. Much because the romance in this is so good. And then another book, this one is a definite comfort read. I want to fall asleep at night or if I just want to read something that I don't have to worry about finishing because I know how it's going to end, I will pick up this book. The problem is, <laughs> it's Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. The problem is, is that the last time that I tried to do that, it was like 12 a.m. and I had just finished a book and I didn't want to start a new book because I was afraid I was going to fall asleep. So I was like, you know what? Let me listen to a comfort read. So I listened to the audiobook for this. I ended up staying up until I finished the audiobook, which was like, random hours of the morning. <laughs> so I ended up staying up to finish it because it had been so long since I reread this book. And like whenever that happens, I feel like I have to finish, like I got really invested in the book and I couldn't put it down. So that's the story of my life. Birthday Girl, if you don't know, is a taboo romance, but it's like taboo light. It's like if you are the type of person who doesn't think that they like taboo romance, this might be for you. It's a slow burn. It's an epic romance. It's a romance between a girl and her boyfriend's father. So it is age gap romance. And But the girl is 18. She's or 19. I think she either just turned 18 or just turned 19. But it's a really, really freaking good book. Another book that I reread over and over and over again ever since the first time that I picked it up is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I love the audiobook to this book. It is one of those very rare instances where I feel like the narrator sounds exactly like how the main character would sound. Like exactly, it's perfect. So I have reread this book so many times. I read this for the first time around the first time I read A Court of Mist and Fury. And I remember reading A Court of Mist and Fury and feeling like I could never ever find another book that would make me feel that way again. And then I read The Hating Game and I felt almost as impacted by this book as I did by A Court of Mist and Fury because the romance is that good. This is a slow burn. It's a workplace romance. Enemies to lovers. Absolutely adorable. I love it. Another book that I reread a million times was my very first adult romance that I ever read and it's adult paranormal romance. It is Jacob by Jacqueline Frank. I talk about this book a lot. This is part of the Nightwalker series. It's the first book in that series. The Nightwalkers are like these type of night creatures and this series in particular mostly follows demons. So J Jacob is a demon, but not like a red horned demon like he actually kind of reminds me more of like a fae or a vampire than he does a demon but they are elemental creatures and the overarching storyline in this series is really really solid it's really really good the writing is beautiful but the romance is epic Jacob is a very possessive hero he's a typical possessive hero what's great is like this was the first adult romance that I ever read and it stands the test of time like after I read this I reread it over and over and over again and then I ended up reading it you know fairly recently a couple of times fairly recently and it stood up and I remember I reread this book like physically multiple times because there was not an audiobook and at one point <laughs> I had even tried to get JT to record himself reading this book because I wanted an audio version of it and there was no audiobook for it, but <laughs> he only read like the first few chapters of it for me and then he got sick of it and didn't want to read it anymore, but luckily I found an audiobook for it. Another oldie but goodie is Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. When I first read this series, like I remember I first picked up this book when there were only the first two books that were out, so I was like waiting for the rest of the series. I think there's like six books in the series. I remember waiting for the series and it was hilarious because every time a new book would come out, I would reread every book up until the new 
book came out. So obviously I reread this book a lot. And then once the series finished, I read reread the entire series. And then actually a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, when my niece read the series for the first time, I reread it so that I could experience it with her while she was reading it for the first time. And it was amazing. This is obviously a YA paranormal romance. It's like, I feel like a lot of people who loved Twilight ended up picking up this book. I personally think that the series is better than Twilight. I also feel like Vampire Academy stands the test of time as well. By that same author, and I did end up picking up this series because of that, is her adult vampire series, and that is the Georgina Kincaid series by Rochelle Mead. This actually has a bunch of different creatures in it. It has, obviously the main character is a succubi, and it's kind of funny, like this is an absolute paranormal rom-com. It is so freaking funny. There are a million characters in it who are hilarious epic, epic, epic romance. And the hero is a writer and he actually writes the heroine's favorite books. So she's our, she's obsessed with his books before she meets him. She is one of my favorite female heroines because she is so charismatic and magnetic and I love her and hilarious. And there's just so much chemistry. There's great banter. Like I laughed out loud reading this book. And again, this was one of those books where the first couple of books were out when I picked it up. And then I had, I ended up rereading it every single time a new book came out. And then as soon as I finished the series, I reread the whole series. Like, so not just this book have I reread over and over again, this entire series. Along that same vein was Stray by Rachel Vincent. This book, I think I ended up picking up because I was looking for more books like this book. And this was a book I think maybe was just in the same area of the bookstore that Jacob was. This is more of a new adult paranormal romance. It is a shifter romance and um, they are werecats in it. So good. This is a, would we call it? I guess this is a childhood friends to lovers second chance romance. There's also a love triangle in here. That's really, really good. The character growth of the main character Faith in this is amazing. Again, another book that I reread so many times because only the first couple of books were out when I picked this book up. So I had to reread it, had to <laughs> reread it every time a new book came out. And then I just kept rereading it over and over. Like, honestly, this these books kind of happened all about the same time. And I would just kind of rotate between these books and reread them over and over and over again. And then this next one is actually a duet that I reread quite a few times. This is the second book in the duet. Please do not read this book first. Please read the first book, which is Full Tilt in this duet first. But it is the Full Tilt duet by Emma Scott. Super, super emotional duet. I've come across so many people who have only read the first book in this duet and have not read this book yet. And I'm like, what are you doing? This is the best book in this series. Like this book is so necessary to the duet and it almost feels like full tilt was like a prologue that was leading to this book it is so good but very 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 emotional and heartbreaking and heart-wrenching and hard to read but also the romance is so epic in it like i just i reread this one so many times and i reread this book a lot even though I had so many books on my TBR already so it's one of those books that I wasn't just rereading it because I didn't have anything else to read I was rereading it because I couldn't stop myself it's so good and actually the last time that I reread this book was actually when Avery was reading this duet and I think she had already read the first book or something and then she was going to read the second book I can't remember we buddy read it together and I was like I will absolutely <laughs> reread this duet because I love it that much I wouldn't necessarily call that a comfort read because it is so emotional and it's hard to get through sometimes but it's another one of those like whenever someone's talking about it or saying that they're going to read it I'm like I will read it with you and then another book that I read more recently than let's say like Jacob or something but another book that I read and reread over and over and over again is Misadventures of a College Girl by Lauren Rowe. You all know that I love the Morgan Brothers series and everything in the Morgan Brothers universe. This book has nothing to do with the Morgan Brothers universe at all, but it's my favorite book by Lauren Rowe. It is my favorite book. And it also has a virgin heroine, which I don't normally like. But again, Lauren Rowe takes books and takes tropes that I don't normally like and things that maybe I don't normally like and makes me love them. Like not just tolerate them, not just like them, love them. And that is the case for this book. This has one of the healthiest relationships I've ever read. It's a new adult romance. Again, another thing that I haven't been loving as much lately, but I adore this book and it's stands the test of time like this one's a comfort read it's on the same level as like archer's voice and true and the true north book keepsake where and birthday girl where like if i need something to listen to at night if i don't want to start a brand new book 
I will pick up this book. Or like if I am in a book slump and I want to read a book that will remind me why I love reading books, I'll pick up a book like this one. The whole premise is her trying to find someone to lose her virginity to, but she wants it to be a good first time. So her friend decides that the way that she's going to have a good first time is to sleep with a player. And so she like finds a football player and decides to sleep with him. And then he ends up like showing her the ropes and stuff. And it's just, it's really good. And then of course I had to reread this book so many times, which is a commitment. It is a beast. And I don't know how long I'm going to be able to hold this book up because it's so heavy. The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. This was my very first Mariana Zapata book I ever read. And it is still my favorite. Like, Others have come close, like her latest book, All Roads Lead Here, come, comes close to my favorite, but I, nothing will replace how much I love this book. If I talk about it, it makes me want to read it. This is a sports romance. It's a little bit of enemies to lovers, and it's Marriage of Convenience, and it is my favorite Mariana Zapata. These next two books are part of the same series, but they're the two books in the series that I reread the most. Like I have reread this series, I think, I think I've only reread this series a total of twice. But I reread these two books several times, and that is Pucked and Pucked Off. These are my two favorite books in the series. And actually, the last time that I read this series in total, I actually ended up falling in love with the last book that came out. So I think the next time I do a reread of the series, it'll probably be these two books and then the last book. This is a hockey sports romance, and it's a rom-com for the most part. This book is much more rom com -y than this book. This book is much more serious. And I feel like this one is probably my all-time favorite in the series. This is the first book. This is the fifth book. Like the hero in this one is like kind of not like nerdy, like glasses and plays video games kind of nerdy, but like nerdy as in he's kind of awkward and I love it. And then this is a very, you have a very broken hero in Lance in this book. And he's my favorite. Lance Romero is my favorite of all the pucked guys. And I just, I adore the series so much. This one's definitely a comfort read. It's one of the books that I'll pick up if I've either, either A, if I've talked about it a lot or B, if I want a comfort read. Another book that I reread so many freaking times is Rule by Jay Crownover. I don't even remember why I picked, this is the first book in the Marked Men series and the Marked Men series revolves around a tattoo parlor and he is one of the tattoo artists. This one has like a pining heroine, like she has had a crush on him for a really long time and it is a brother's best friend romance. Like she is best friends with his late twin brother. And it's just, it's so freaking good. Like this whole, this whole series is amazing. And I think I've only read the entire series through once, but I reread this book in particular over and over and over again. So this next one is one that, this is definitely a duet that I read when I'm in a reading slump. This is the perfect duet to read when I'm in a reading slump because it's, they're super short. Both books are super short and they're so good. And it just makes me want to read all the books after I read this. And that is Hearts and Darkness by Laura Kay. This is a romance that takes place all within an elevator. The couple gets trapped on an elevator in the dark so they don't see each other, but they have this amazing conversation and connection and then a romance ensues when they've never seen each other and it's amazing. It also has really, really great anxiety rep in it too. This is a duet that I pick up when I'm in a reading slump. Another book that I reread over and over and over again. However, all of these other books I reread in their entirety when I reread them, this book, I mostly reread my favorite parts. And that is Lover Awakened by J.R. Ward. This is part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood, which is a vampire paranormal adult romance. And it follows this brotherhood of vampires who are like protecting the vampire race from these things called the lessers. Now, the thing with these books, and the reason why I don't read this book in its entirety, is because there are a lot of scenes that are in like from the lesser's point of view, from like the, the bad guy's point of view. And I don't care. Like I super don't care. <laughs> I know that like when you first read the book, you like there are things that happen in it that are necessary to the storyline. But all I care about is the romance because the romance is amazing. This is like a super, super broken hero, like super broken hero. One of those things where the hero feels like he doesn't deserve the heroine too. It is so freaking good. But again, I don't care about all this stuff about the lessers. So I've reread read this book and I have marked my favorite parts. I have physically reread this book a lot, but I've also listened to the audiobook a lot too. And then last but not least is probably the most underhyped book in all of these, like one that I have never really heard anyone talk about. And it also has kind of low ratings on Goodreads, which baffles me because I'm obsessed with it. And again, I reread it a million times. This one also is a comfort read to me. And that is A Little Night Magic by Lucy March. I found this book. How did I find this book? I bought this book 
it was like completely a cover buy. It was completely on a whim. I feel like I picked this one up because I got it at a discount and there was like nothing else on the bargain shelf that looked good, but I wanted to buy a book. So I just randomly grabbed this one. And I was like, eh, I'll get this one. I ended up reading it and like dying and falling in love with it. This is a rom-com, paranormal. The heroine is like a witch, like she has magic, but she doesn't realize she has magic until it's triggered and ends up being freaking hilarious. But I love, love, love this book. And I reread this physical book multiple times before I finally discovered that there was an audiobook for it and then I ended up listening to the audiobook over and over and over again and this is one of those books that's a comfort read like I will pick it up when I just want to read something that reminds me why I love books all right guys that's it those are all the books that I have reread the most let me know down below what some of your most reread books are thank you guys so much for watching and as always happy reading <laughs>